Here's a company that does not share our values. Uh, several weeks ago, Netflix began promoting a new film from French director Maimouna Dancore, probably mispronouncing that, but uh, the movie's called Cuties, and the poster featuring scantily clad children posing suggestively caused well-deserved outrage when it first appeared. The Sundance Film Festival, which honored the film with a directing award, provided a synopsis that didn't do much to quell the anger either. According to Sundance, Cuties tells the story of an 11-year-old girl named Amy who quote, through an ignited awareness of her burgeoning femininity, propels the group to enthusiastically embrace an increasingly sensual dance routine, uh, sparking the girls' hope to twerk their way to stardom at a local dance contest. It's perhaps worth, perhaps worth mentioning here that Sundance was co-founded by a man who is now in prison for child sexual abuse. I don't know, I just wanted to throw that in there. The film's official description from Netflix was only slightly less grotesque sounding, and they they said Amy Eleven becomes fascinated with a twerking dance crew. Hoping to join them, she starts to explore her femininity, defying her family's traditions. Now, after the backlash, Netflix apologized, not for the film itself, but simply for the inappropriate artwork, they said. The streaming service also changed the synopsis, getting rid of any mention of twerking, and instead calling it a free-spirited dance crew. Netflix did not bother to explain why they used that quote-unquote inappropriate artwork in the first place to promote the film. You know, if it doesn't actually reflect the content, and if they're not trying to attract an audience of pedophiles who wish to see pubescent girls gyrate on stage, then what was the thought process behind the way it was originally marketed? We were never told. The website Bustle said that the poster was simply botched. Now, I can understand botching a poster with a typo or some other error due to carelessness, but how do you botch something by accidentally turning it into softcore child porn? That's my question. Many other media outlets rushed to to the defense of uh, the twerking children movie. An article by Anna Menta on The Decider scolded the film's detractors, baselessly linking the criticism to the QAnon conspiracy theory, and said that we all owe the director an apology. Richard Broder at The New Yorker called the movie extraordinary, and blasted the scurrilous campaign launched by right-wingers to criticize the movie. The Rolling Stones' David Fear gave Cuties a positive review, saying that the outrage is all the product of a major misleading marketing mistake. The Independent joined the chorus of Defenders, declaring, uh, quote, Cuties on Netflix is too moving a film to be marred by one bad-taste poster. Many outlets, such as NPR, claim that the film actually criticizes and exposes the sexualization of children. Actress Tessa Thompson said that she was gutted by the, quote, beautiful film and that the, quote, current discourse misses the fact that the movie comments on the hypersexualization of pre-adolescent girls. Overall, the outrage certainly did not deter the media from hailing cuties as an artistic triumph, as you could tell. In fact, as we speak, it sits at 90% fresh on review aggregator site Rotten Tomatoes, with critics saying other things like, It's refreshingly frank about class, religion, and burgeoning sexuality in ways that mainstream American movies would never dare. And also, quote, cuties certainly deserves to be seen. For a while, the film's valiant defenders in the media and Hollywood had the advantage of being the only people to have actually seen it. Uh, The rest of us could but make assumptions based on the, it would seem, rather significant fact that it's a movie about 11-year-olds twerking, which Netflix had decided to market with a picture of said 11-year-olds barely clothed and striking sexual poses. But you can't judge a movie by its child porn cover, we were told. And then yesterday, the film was finally released. It turns out, unsurprisingly, you can. As fuller clips from the film now circulate online, I won't play any of them here because honestly, I'd worry about the FBI breaking down my door if I did. It's clear that those of us who criticized the movie actually understated our case. It is, if anything, way worse than we assumed and feared. Some examples. One scene features the 11-year-old girls gyrating and slapping each other on the butt as the camera zooms in for close-ups. Another shows Amy in her underwear, furiously thrusting her body as she lays on the floor. Again, camera gives close-ups. In another, the girls dance provocatively for two grown men, one of whom looks on with obvious and creepy satisfaction. And still another, Amy pulls down her pants uh, and takes a picture of her crotch and posts it online. And the pen, in the uh, penultimate scene, which was featured on the original poster before Netflix changed it, that scene is significantly more disturbing than the already disturbing image let on. 
The scene drags on for several minutes. The dancing is highly, highly sexualized, and the camera, as always, zooms in for crotch shots and other close-ups. This is not a commentary on child sexual exploitation. It is child exploitation, clear as day, in all its sadism. And remember, the characters and the actors who play them are 11 years old. With these horrific scenes now publicly available, it seems almost pointless to engage with the plainly absurd notion that the filmmakers had 11-year-old children writhe around and gyrate on stage while barely clothed as some kind of protest against the sexualization of children. It would be like a slasher film featuring uh, several scenes of various screaming victims being disemboweled, claiming in its defense that it only meant to comment on the problem of graphic violence in film. Indeed, that actually is the defense often offered for slasher flicks, and and it's as weak in that case as it is here. The guy who made Texas Chainsaw Massacre may have told himself that he had higher intentions, but the fact remains that most people who watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre just want to see, well, a chainsaw massacre. I suppose when it comes down to it, no filmmaker wants to come out and admit that they produced gratuitous garbage for a lowest common denominator audience, but many filmmakers do produce that sort of material for that sort of audience, whether they admit it or not. And Cuties belongs on that ghastly heap for sure, hopefully buried underneath it somewhere deep where it cannot be seen. Despite the pretensions of Anna Menta at The Decider and many others in media, the normalization of pedophilia is not a right-wing fairy tale or a QAnon conspiracy theory. It is real. It is happening. Here's Exhibit A. Or, you know, not even Exhibit A. I mean, this, this is a, a long line of exhibits. It's, it's right in front of us for us to see. You know, um, yes, do you have the normalization of pedophilia in a culture where a movie like this not just exists, okay? It's not just this, that, that, that some, some pervert, some creep made this movie and it's, it's out there in the hinterland somewhere, uh, out on the fringes, and, and no one's seen it. This is being uh, uh, promoted and, and supplied to us, to the, to the American audience, by a billion-dollar streaming platform. And major media publications have come out in its defense strenuously uh, to defend it. You wouldn't have that in a culture that didn't normalize pedophilia and child sexual exploitation. I mean, this is, this is a country where children are sent to the library to be read stories by drag queens. Uh, this is a country where uh, you know, Planned Parenthood goes into middle schools and high schools to hand out birth control. This is a country where we've got, you know, quote unquote, sex ed in elementary schools telling kids about masturbation and other things. So, yes, this is a, a, a real plan uh, among the powers that be in our culture to sexualize children. There is no doubt about it. And this right here from Netflix. I mean, if this is not reason, if this, if this does not convince us all to cancel our Netflix subscriptions, if we still have them, then, um, then I don't know what will. There have to be real penalties for something like this. We can't just complain about it and say how horrible this is and then go about our merry, merry way while still paying Netflix our subscription fee. We cannot do that. Uh, if there was ever a reason for a boycott, this is it right here. So let's all do that today. Let's cancel our Netflix subscriptions. That, that's, that's the least we can do. That's step one. Thank you for tuning in to The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative uh, outlets in the entire country. If you enjoyed this video, Be sure to give it a like and then subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.